Now the title of this video is To Winch or Not To Winch. I've been offered a Warn Xeon Platinum 10S winch. Now why am I being offered it? Well somebody said to me, hey, we've got one here, it's been used, it's, come, it's a takeoff, would you be interested in it? And at the time I just said, don't really have any need for it because I'm not sure how I get it fitted onto the L322. Now, Max at Lander of a Passion, and the picture on the thumbnail is actually of his car with a winch tray that he built that fits into the front bumper of an L322. Now, because of the front structure behind the bumper themselves, they, all, they are all the same. It's just the bumper cover in the faceleaf versions from 10 to 12, which is what I have, that makes it look different. Now, there could be small mounting point differences, but generally, you take those front covers off and they both look the same. There's a big steel crash structure behind the back. So Max has designed a winch tray that goes inside the bumper to allow you to fit a winch. And it fits pretty much every any type of winch depending on the height. You have to cut the bumper. So you cannot get any of the Land Rover factory winch kits anymore. They're, if you can find them, they're like hen's teeth. So being offered this winch, I went to Max and said, okay, Will this winch fit that bump kit? Will it fit the tray that you've got? The answer has been yes. So I'm now considering going down this route. Now you may sort of say, well, hang on a minute. Didn't you say way back when you bought the L322, you wanted to try and keep it as stock as possible? And that's true, I did, and I have. And cutting sort of the front of the bumper off to be able to put the winch in, to me is not a big deal. That thing is cracked. I've hit it a few times. Um, and I've definitely sort of, you know, scraped it. And in the accident, the whole of the bumper came down and it, the front of it scraped as well from that accident. The cutting of the bumper to get the winch tray in is really below the level of where the grill is. Now Max's kit takes into consideration that the control unit for the winch sits high. Now on the worn winches, you get a control relocation kit where you can, can take that control unit, pull it out, which lowers the profile of the winch. And then you, because it's got an automatic clutch on a control unit, you don't actually have the, the ability to go and move the clutch. It's all done through remote control. So the little cutout that you can see, and I'll put a picture here, is not necess necessary for this. So the amount of cutting that I would have to do to fit this on my vehicle will really just be head on, not above it. So am I considering doing this? And the answer is yes, I am. Now, again, I know I said I wanted to keep this as stock as I possibly could. Why the heck would you want to go down this route? Good. Now, everybody knows I've got engine rebuilds going on at the moment. My plan always with the vehicles I've had, I had the Defender for four years. I'm probably going to keep this for another three years and I'm going to do whatever I can to keep it moving in the right direction, which means if it needs fixing, it's going to get fixed. I'm going to keep on testing bits and pieces out like the water heaters going in. I've got my red vision system. All those things are just making the vehicle better for the type of travel I want to do. Now I'm looking long term. Ideally my next vehicle is probably going to be one of the new Defenders, probably a 110. And three or four years out the depreciation of those vehicles would have come down. A lot of the issues in those early first versions that came out would have been resolved. I know there's a few little niggly things I've had recalls on. And I feel comfortable that I can then go from an L322 to a Defender 110. A lot of the gear, as with the Defender that I had, the older Defender I had, some of that stuff came off the vehicle with me and went into the L322. I would probably do exactly the same here. Anything I put on this L322 now, potentially, will come off. So clearly I can't move things like the roof rack. But a lot of the things that are in it now, like the water heater, my red vision system, my dual battery setup, the fridge, the kitchen, and the winch can come off the L322 and potentially all go on to a Defender 110. 
So this is sort of a long-term view of this. If I buy this now, put it on the L322, and the L322 gets retired in another three years, which it probably will, somebody might buy it in its current state, or I might just break it. I'm not sure, we'll see. So that's the idea behind the winch. Now, I've said many, many times you don't need it, and you don't need it. I had one on my Range Rover Classic when I was in uh, New Hampshire. I used that thing twice. Neither of the times I used it was to get myself out of difficulty. I think by having a winch, I can go further afield knowing I can self-recover. I, you know, having max tracks and things like that, I can start taking on more difficult trails knowing that I can get myself out if something happened. And like I said, Brian on the dry riverbed decided he wanted to push his vehicle up on a rock so he could get a really good angle and take a picture of it, ended stoving the front of it underneath a rock and he couldn't move. All four wheels kept spinning because he couldn't get himself up. Now, thankfully, the rest of us had a little bit more common sense not to go and stove our cars onto a rock just to get a really good picture. But anyway, Brian, we all laughed at your expense and we will continue to do it that you had to get pulled out by Ford. So anyway, that's my rationale by going down this route. Now, my other rationale behind this is I want to be able to go further afield, probably not next year, but the year after. Places like Romania, down into the Balkans, assuming they're not still warring down there or it's not impacting yet, I'd love to be able to do Bulgaria, Romania, those types of countries. Now, some of that is not the same as Spain, and I think having the winch will be there as more of an insurance policy. My other reasoning behind this is, now that I've found a vendor, no off-road club have got wheels that fit over six pot Brembo's, I can now comfortably go to 18 inch rims with 18 inch tires, which means I can now push this thing further without having to worry about riding around on 20 inch rims and tires. I now have more sidewall that I can use where I can take this thing and push it further afield than I probably wasn't prepared to do sitting around on 20 inch rims and tires but also knowing that I now have flexibility to have a, a winch on the front if something goes wrong, more flexibility in being able to air up and air down on 18 inch rims and tires, which you don't generally do on 20s. And one of the major criticisms I have from those wonderful Toyota trolls who love my channel has always been 20 inch rims and tires. Well, that's going to change probably before we do this trip uh, in May. So that will be one less thing for you lot to have a go at me about. So I'm looking forward to be able to get 18 inch rims and tires, get some BFG KO2s on it. And that's another box checked to make sure that this thing becomes unstoppable. So anyway, that's what it is. Comments down below, let me know what you think. If you like the videos that I've been putting out, please subscribe. 68% of you that watch my content are not subscribed. It's simple. Just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so anytime I put any content out, you'll be notified. And even new Toyota fanboys that seem to love my content are drawn into it because it shows failure points that you don't have with your vehicle. Subscribe. I'll put up either comments. You'll just help my watch time, which I really appreciate. So please like the video if you like the video, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and with that, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.